Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Blake. How's everybody doing? And so, as you probably very well know, unless you are deaf or don't have any form of communication, the latest and greatest sensation is the abortion issue. Roe versus Wade, 1973. Old white men controlling women. That's the war. So, my question, or maybe not my question, but I am going to have one guest already on a Spotify. However, I did want to just say a little something in regards to uh, that and namely that out of nowhere another and I'm not saying conspir not necessarily it's conspiratorial but out of nowhere we have abortion this thing we need to overturn this knowing full well the effects the implications as far as how people are going to respond to it there have been mass protests everywhere I wish I could have been in LA while that was happening uh, there was one in Boston as well uh, yesterday and they are popping up all over the country and how long before it ends or will this continue to be a raging issue now look Republicans, Democrats, or liberals and conservatives, of which I'm neither. If you look at the controlling states where restrictions will be enabled, um, a lot of those are southern states. Louisiana, Georgia, Alabama, a lot of these. Now, that's an economic issue, too. You know, it always plays the politics and, and, and economics always go hand in hand. And so you have now up here in New England, it's cool with the exception of New Hampshire, which is a Republican state and restrictions, uh, potential restrictions. But those states that have those restrictions, I wonder the social breakdown, how that's going to break down for people because a lot of uh, these states that have these restrictions, it's going to be a lot of anxiety, a lot of hatred that's going to manifest as a result of this. And I often think about one most notable thing. Whenever a man tells a woman what you can't do and then a woman agrees with that man, about that woman's body it's like wait a minute you have the same body she has how can you disagree with her as far as abortion goes now are there situations where abortion is necessary of course there are but just say hey i'm pro-life and and if you have that baby if you get pregnant then you're going to have that baby at this point is life and so on and so forth is it a rabbit hole i i i i don't know Yes, no, I don't know, but it feels like it is. It feels like it's a rabbit hole and many people are going to dive into it because there are several breakdowns in, in regard to that. There's a racial breakdown. For those of you that don't know nothing about the history of abortion or Planned Parenthood, where most of them are in high concentrated urban areas where people that look like me. Yes, it's always affected the black woman more than it's affected the white woman in its high concentrated areas. So there is a racial breakdown to this. Of course, you're not going to hear that because we're all one. We're supposed to think like robots, right? Wrong. We're supposed to tell the truth as we understand it. And so because of that, it makes it even more of a social dynamic, which means you have to look at why. You look at why that's happening, there's an answer to your dilemma right there. Why is this happening? 
it's economics, it's, it's power, it's politics rather, it's politics which creates power, the economics, they all go hand in hand, they all go hand in hand. Now, and I'm going to leave that at that, but there's something else I want to bring up too. Someone that I know, a woman who some of y'all might know, I had a talk with her about two weeks ago. Of course, I'm not going to mention her name, but she's a white woman. And she's uh, she said some things that her and I agree with a lot. She's not only sees it, she speaks to it. Like a lot of y'all see things, but keep your mouth shut because you don't want to get involved even though it affects you. Shame on you. It affects you. Open your mouth. She does. Now, this white boy, 18 years old, he goes in the store, shoots up a bunch of people. Eight out of 10 were black, according to a report. And he had armor, body armor, stuff like that. He was taken alive. And I wonder, again, if that was a black kid, would that have happened? Would it have been different? Why wouldn't you think that? Why wouldn't you think that? You know what kind of system this is. You know. But many can't speak to it because it makes them uncomfortable. But what I thought about with this woman was another white boy, and she's white saying this, another white boy sitting home with nothing to do except go online and learn how to kill somebody. Shoots up a school or school or goes into a mall and starts murdering people, stores, whatever, case in point. Because they don't have a mommy and daddy anymore. Their mommy and daddy is social media. And how it's not, it's a, it's, we know why it's going on, but these people that know aren't going to do anything about it because there's politics involved with it. There's Democrats, there's uh, Republicans, or liberals and conservatives, so on and so forth. As long as that game is being played out, then people, emotions, are being spread thin as a result of this type of stuff. Now, when this woman said this to me about two weeks ago, she knows I understand this as well. And we laughed and we joked about it, respectfully speaking about why this is. It's called racism. It's called making excuses for racism. And I thought about her as soon as I saw the news this morning, my thought was what she said. And I did not contact her. I'm gonna let it sit for a few days and wait till I see this person again and we will respond to it. And so, but yeah, just a little something I was uh was going on in the cranium. Uh everything is good this way. Of course, like I always say, there's always room for improvement. Always room for improvement. And I would encourage everyone or anyone that knows me to reach out to me, be a voice about a concern of yours and we can have it on a Spotify. We can reach more people that way. Because a lot of y'all, unfortunately are talkers and not doers, but here's a way to step your game up. Here's a way to push the envelope. Here's a way for you to share what you feel that may reach other people on a different type of uh, 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 venue. It don't hurt, it can only help, right? Of course. I mean, everybody has their own uh, method or view of understanding something and, you know, whatever. But there's a song, Kendrick Lamar. He did this uh, so not in 95. Yeah, it's hard, it's symbolic, it's heavy, and it's real. And I love it. Now, in one of his songs towards the end, he says... I'm paraphrasing. You're so concerned about critique. That's not protocol. For many of you, you're concerned about what others think of you. That should not be your protocol. That's what holds many of you back because you want to be friends with people when it's convenient. You know, like be yourself, allow yourself to grow and be your own individual and you'll better appreciate yourself you find out things about you you didn't even know or saw but couldn't connect the dots because you have other shit in the way of that like people who have uh dirt 
You know, you watch TV shows, you listen to somebody in the news, uh, you might be sitting next to somebody in a meeting or wherever. What's the dirt on so-and-so, so-and-so? Yeah, we got the dirt on so-and-so. Yeah, we need to get some dirt on. Politicians, oh, you hear it all the time. But what is dirt? If there's no dirt, there's nothing to challenge yourself against, right? If there's no dirt, there's no way to know what it's like to clean yourself or to clean a situation if there's no dirt. So dirt has a negative connotation as if dirt means something bad. Dirt don't necessarily mean something bad. It's a circumstance. And many of us are unable to rise above our circumstances because we're so locked into, again, the critique of others. So concerned about how others critique your method of doing, your method of living. That is not how it works. Just a little something to think about. I got fired up all of a sudden. But all right, listen, I'm going to pass this on to who I'm going to pass it on to. And let's see where this takes us. All right, this is Blake. I'm out. Word. Thank you.